position of the thermometer, we are going to use these four uh, samples. As I said, we are going to use the urea, benzoin, fluoranone, and benzoic acid. We learn a lot about how we, are, we actually train ourselves have to be smart and which one should we use so we have less waiting time between the samples. I'm going to start with the sample that has the lowest theoretical value for the melting point, and that would be our uh, fluoranone. Uh, the sample of the fluoranone, now, uh, if we look at this sample, the crystals are kind of large, and I can take some of these crystals, put them into, um, you know, open container so you could see that these crystals are, um, are large. What happens if I, if I try to get a sample of this uh, crystals, the sample prep step, one of the first steps of the sample prep is to get this sample into the, into the capillary tube. So if I try with large crystals, those are big and is not going to fit into the opening of this small opening of the capillary tube. So first step for us in the sample prep is to, to grind the sample to get into like finely powdered sample, which feeding the capillary tube is going to be then much easier. So we, we are going to grind the sample. The sample is now finely uh, powdered. Um, to feed the sample, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to take a capillary tube. I touch the closed end of the capillary tube only, the closed end of capillary tube, and I place the open end of the capillary tube. I don't want to touch the open end of capillary tube because I don't want to contaminate my sample. I would tap the capillary tube a few times into the sample. And I can show you a few times, sample gets into the capillary tube. Now we need to transfer the sample from the tip of cal capillary tube to the bottom of capillary tube. To do that, I'm going to use a hollow glass tube and, and drop the capillary tube through that hollow glass tube. Do that a couple of times and make sure the sample is all the way down and properly packed. What do I mean by that is that there is no air trap between the sample and is like properly um, packed. If it's not packed and if we have air gap here, air is not a good conductor of the heat as a result we are going to have an even distribution of the heat. And with uneven distribution of the heat, the, the range of the melting is going to be recorded by false um, wider. And that is by false, we are going to record our sample, not pure. Since we are trying to calibrate our thermometer, we have to follow proper technique. Now, this sample is going to go through the set to, we are going to place in the sample holder of the melt machine and uh, we turn on, set the power regulator. Now, this is, these are known samples. Fluoranone has the melting point of 84. Now I'm going to adjust this using the diagram that I showed you earlier. If it's 80, 80, around 80, between 50 and 80, the setting of this should be around like two. So I cannot do fast heating, should be anywhere between two and three. So I will set that number uh, between two and three. I would turn on. And when I turn on, I am going to look through this eyepiece and I wait for the sample uh, to melt. To record the initial melting temperature, what I need to do, uh, what I am waiting for is to see some liquid formed in the bulk of the sample. There is a magnifying glass here that we can look through easily. The, if the liquid forms about the sample, um, that is due condensation, is known as 
sweating of the sample. That's not the temperature we are recording. We are recording te temperature when there is liquid in the first drop of the liquid in the bulk of the, um, of the sample. As the sample is melting, we monitor and we want to make sure that we are not going to miss that initial melting. Okay, initial melting took place. And as soon as it turns clear, all solid changes to liquid, we are going to record the final. See, it's happening now. Very nice. Okay, everything is liquefied and we have the temperature of 82. So it started at 80 and it finished at 82. And at this point, we turn off the meltdown apparatus, let it cool down before we use the next sample. Our next sample is benzoic acid, also uh, finely powdered. It's grinded. We get the sample into the, into the capillary tube and pass it through the hollow glass tube to get the sample to transfer from the top to the bottom in the, in the capillary tube and replace it inside the meltdown apparatus as soon as we make sure that is properly packed. The setting this time is going to be between four and five because benzoic acid melts between 100 and 150 and that between four and five is coming from the, the diagram that I have the suggested setting for the power regulator. Now, this is the final melting for the benzoic acid at 120. And uh, it is consistent with the other sample. Our next sample would be urea. And if you look at the crystal size of the urea, you could see that it's impossible for them to fit into capillary tube. So we are going to, to grind it. They have it in this um, container now grinded. Take a sample of urea. And while I'm preparing the sample, the meltdown apparatus is turned off and waiting for it to cool down. We know urea melts at 134. So these are known samples. I have to wait for the, the meltdown apparatus to cool down to at least like 124, which is 10 degree less than the melting point. So I'm going to place the sample in the sample holder of the meltdown apparatus. And the sample melts between 100 and 150 based on the chart. So the setting is going to be at um, four, between four and five. So I just put it closer to four for slower uh, heating of the sample. Okay, this sample start melting at 130 and stop melting at 132. Again, is consistent with the other sample.
Our next sample is uh, Benzoin. Uh, Benzoin has melting point literature value of 137. Uh, grinding the sample, making sure that it can fit into the capital tube properly and it will be packed properly. And with about, about three milliliters of the sample, we don't want to put too much sample because it won't be easy to see through the eyepiece. We wait for the melting apparatus to cool down to about 127 a degree because it, that would be 10 degree less than the melting point of our new sample. And when the temperature is low enough to 127, we can now place the sample into the sample holder and turn it on and wait for the sample to melt. The setting is going to be again between four and five. Okay. This melting point for this one started slightly earlier, but still is within the, within the range. So uh, the correction is going to be slightly different. Um, I will have the screenshot of the thermometer. for you and you record the exact temperature when for initial melting and then for final melting which would be labeled for you.